Prohibition Partners TV with Lindsay Hooper. Hello, welcome to another interview from Prohibition Partners in a series that we're putting online so that you can get a taster ahead of our flagship event in June on the 22nd and 23rd Prohibition Partners Live. We are forced to move that online this year, but we do hope you join us. And to give you a bit of a flavour, today my speaker has a lot responsibility in his native country of Portugal. He's head of national drug policy there. Please welcome João Castelo Branco. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, João. Thank you so much for sparing yeah. some of your time to speak yeah. to us. Um, I'm starting the interviews by asking everybody their connection to the cannabis industry. How did yours come about? I am not I'm not connected to to the industry. Uh, as you said, I am the national coordinator on uh, of Portugal on drugs and cannabis is of course one of the the top uh, items in in our agenda. We decriminalized the use of every drug uh, back in two, 2000 2001. Uh, when we were facing a huge epidemic, uh, mostly on heroin. Cannabis has uh, been always the most used uh, illicit substance in our country, but the big problems arose from, from heroin. And that was a quite brave decision, I think, and uh, led us to uh, a drop in stigma made possible to discuss drug issues in every setting, in families, in schools, in prisons, everywhere. Uh, it's no longer a taboo in our, in our society. And I think it was a very, very uh, important uh, step forward. Uh, it, made, it facilitated a lot the approach of uh, problematic users to the health system uh, and we have a dramatic improvement in the situation concerning uh, HIV infections, for instance, uh, uh, overdoses, deaths, all that. Uh, we had a huge, of course, decriminalization is not a magic bullet. Uh, we have to do much more than that. We have to make uh, healthcare available for everybody in need of it. Um, but uh, it's uh, important as a framework for, for our policies. Using drugs in Portugal and possessing drugs for personal use is no longer a crime, uh, but it is still forbidden. It's, uh, uh, it's forbidden under the administrative law. So if, if you are caught in possession of small amounts of, of, uh, of drugs in a public place, you are still uh, we, we, you still incur in administrative sanctions, such as fines if you are not addicted. Uh, if you are addicted, you never get a, a pecuniary fine. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, long list of uh, administrative penalties. But you never get a criminal record. You never end up in prison because you are using or possessing drugs in small amounts. On the contrary, selling drugs. Uh, trafficking is forbidden and is punished, may be punished with uh, imprisonment. Has the uh, European Union had, had much of an opinion or a view that you've heard on what Portugal's policy has been? You know, in the, in the beginning, uh, 2001, 2002, we had a huge pressure, international pressure, to reverse uh, that decision. Uh, but in fact, uh, uh, starting in 2006, seven, we started to 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 show good results uh, with, uh, as I said, with a drop in HIV infections, overdoses, deaths, and that, uh, and a huge international uh, attention was uh, devoted to our to our model, uh, mostly after the presentation of. Uh, report by the K2 Institute in Washington uh, made by Glenn Greenwald uh, who, who was the first uh, showcase of the Portuguese model to the to the world and since then a huge uh, interest has uh, spread all over the world 
we have we used to have not not nowadays but we used to have lots of visitors from all the continents coming here to to watch how we did it and uh, what usually uh, strikes most the attention of our visitors is the humane way that uh, we as personal and uh, not not only uh, but also the 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 authority the policial authorities uh, uh devote to the to drug users okay so mm -hmm. it it was it has really changed the relation of uh, users with the all the all the responsibles for for of, of the state medicinal cannabis has sparked a lot of interest in certainly in the last 12 months um what has your been your takeaway from that in portugal have you experienced a lot of success not really because uh cannabis products are still uh cannabis products available for for medical use are still uh, very few and mm -hmm. uh, hard to hard to to take i must say that my role on on, on that discussion even at the parliament uh, where some projects of a, of a, of a law were presented my first concern was clearly separate uh, the discussion around uh, medical cannabis from uh, from non medical or creation or whatever you want to call it uh, use because in the beginning it was not uh, we uh, were not holding a very serious discussion and once that uh, that uh, separation was made we started to 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 speak more clearly about different issues eh? yeah uh, so I, I think it was crucial uh, uh, because in the beginning uh, some of the projects that were presented were not really very serious nowadays things are clear and we are uh, we know exactly what we are discussing so do you see a lot more change coming yes yes i, I think so but i, I must say that um, nowadays uh, the big concern is uh, keeping cannabis and cannabis use as safe as as possible uh, making safer products uh, available to to users uh, and what we are following very attentively uh, is the, the 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 experiences that are being made in other countries we are not under pressure to take decisions right now and we hope to have clear ideas about how uh, people behave in a regulated market uh, talking about uh, 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 non-medical use how, how do things evolve how, how youngsters uh, uh, behave uh, with this availability of cannabis product uh, legal cannabis uh, products uh, how do mental health uh, evolve uh, how does uh, traffic uh, problems evolve under a under a regulated market versus uh, uh, non-regulated as it is nowadays so we are uh, we are following very very closely the the, the the situation in other countries in Uruguay in Canada uh, in other places where, uh, uh, cannabis products are regulated uh, to better understand how can we better uh, defend the health values all of that research now is going to bring so many answers for you but it might take a, a little bit of time to get those to to properly put the research in that you need to um do you think this area of growth is is going to continue because the cannabis industry as a whole has been on a trajectory and you think that's going to continue yes i think so uh but you know i i, I think we are now nowadays we are living a situation where we can clearly watch the tension between 
several kinds of values. Uh, with the COVID uh, pandemic, we are following this. There's the values of health, and on mm -hmm. the other way, there's the there are the values of economics. And we are playing a little bit the the the, the game of the rope. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because we cannot uh, uh, assume that one of those values is absolute. Okay. In the cannabis industry, I believe there are tension also uh, between health and economics. I believe that economics will will uh, uh, increase their importance, uh, but I my main concern is to keep else uh, in the middle of the decisions. No. Yeah, um, uh, and in 2020, as you say, of course, everything with COVID nineteen. How does that affect you in your role at the moment? Well, I'm uh, almost uh, one hundred percent devoted to deal with vulnerable uh, populations, with migrants, with uh, uh, homeless people, with drug users, alcoholics, and so that that are very much exposed to to, to problems, uh, not only to the to the virus, but also to poverty and to to difficult times. They are living difficult times, and we are trying to 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 be close to them and to fulfill their basic needs. And uh, once again, in a very main main way, uh, they are not uh, stigmatized. They are not. Uh, we try to 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 be with them and help them in this difficult times. Fantastic. Um, See, so everyone's had to adjust during this lockdown situation. Prohibition Partners will be going online for their big event of the year in June. Uh, it's going to be a global event this time rather than an attended one in London. Do you think that's going to have some positives, Zhao, that a lot more people can dip in and do what you're doing right now online? Sorry, uh, I missed you. Uh, that more people would uh, by it being online, the Prohibition Partners live event, do you think that's going to oh, get yes, a lot I more people? So. Yes, uh, you know, these uh, video uh, conferences uh, came into our habits uh, lately, so people get, got used to that and may feel much more um, at ease to, to, to participate by uh, via video conference. Uh, so I think uh, you you may have a lot of attendees uh, there's a lot of people interested in those issues so i hope that the conference will be a, a huge success and hopefully this highlights the sort of chat i get to hear it's incredible to be able to speak to someone that is actually in policy and making decisions as you are in portugal thank you very much for sparing us the time today Zhao. thank you it was a real pleasure and see you soon Be part of the conversation at Prohibition Partners Live, 22nd to 23rd of June, the premium online cannabis industry conference.